Next, we're going to look at extensor digitorum longus, sometimes abbreviated EDL. This muscle is shown over here in orange, and you'll notice that its muscle belly is placed a little bit laterally to that of tibialis anterior. So its origin is on the medial surface of the fibula, its proximal half, and also on the lateral tibial condyle, and also on the interosseous membrane. If we follow the muscle belly down, it eventually becomes more tendinous, and then the tendon itself actually runs underneath this anterior retinaculum of the ankle. That's fibrous connective tissue that prevents the tendons from bowing out uh, whenever the ankle goes into dorsiflexion. So the tendon runs underneath that retinaculum, and you can see it divides into four individual tendons, one that goes to each of digits two through five. And so overall, the tendons insert on the distal and middle phalanges of digits two through five. Therefore, the actions of extensor digitorum longus are number one, extension of digits two through five at the metatarsophalangeal or MTP joints, and then also at the interphalangeal joints. Now you'll notice here that one of the insertions is on the middle phalanx of each digit, and the other is also on the distal phalanx. So because there is an insertion on the distal phalanx, the extension is going to be able to occur at both the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. That's why it's not specified here. It's all the interphalangeal joints of digits two through five. This muscle can also assist the tibialis anterior in dorsiflexion of the ankle, specifically at the talocrural joint, and then it also can perform some subtalar eversion. So what you see right here is isolated extension of digits two, three, four, and five. However, the hallux is not extending, it still remains on the floor. So what I'm doing here is selectively contracting extensor digitorum longus and the synergist extensor digitorum brevis, which is an intrinsic foot muscle on the foot dorsum that we'll cover in a separate video. Now you'll notice here that when I extend digits two through five, it appears that the lateral aspect of my foot comes off the ground. And you say, well, that's subtalar eversion, which makes sense because that's one of the actions of extensor digitorum longus. So when you perform subtalar eversion, you do get some of this muscle in addition to the fibularis longus and brevis. Here's another view of the same thing. And the innervation of extensor digitorum longus is deep fibular nerve, although instead of L4, L5, as it were, in tibialis anterior, this gets most of its contributions from L5 and S1. The blood supply here is via the anterior tibial artery, the fibular artery, anterior lateral malleolar artery, lateral tarsal artery, metatarsal artery, plantar artery, and even some of the digital arteries. And as you might guess, the antagonist to this muscle would be the flexor digitorum longus and brevis. And then finally, we'll talk about extensor hallucis longus, or EHL, as it's often abbreviated. This muscle is shown over here in the picture in purple. So this muscle originates from the middle third of the medial surface of the fibula and also from the interosseous membrane. It inserts on the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe. So again, you see this muscle going inferiorly, and it becomes more tendinous. The tendon then runs underneath or deep to this anterior retinaculum, and then you clearly see the tendon going out to the hallux, specifically the base of the distal phalanx. Therefore, the actions of the EHL are going to be extension of the hallux at the MTP joint and also the interphalangeal joint. Now remember, the hallux only has a proximal and distal phalanx, so there's only one interphalangeal joint, but it does produce extension at that in addition to the MTP joint. And then like the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor hallucis longus can help the tibialis anterior with dorsiflexion. It's innervated by the deep fibular nerve, getting most of its contributions from the L5 and S1 nerve root levels, much like the extensor digitorum longus. Its blood supply is very simple, really just from the anterior tibial artery, and it's synergistic with extensor hallucis brevis, which is another intrinsic muscle on the foot dorsum. And so here's isolated extension of the hallux. So again, digits two through five are remaining on the ground, and I'm only extending the big toe. 
Again, this movement is going to involve contraction of both the extensor hallucis longus and extensor hallucis brevis. And as you might imagine, the antagonist to this muscle would be the flexor hallucis longus and flexor hallucis brevis. So I'm going to leave you right here, and we're going to pick up with toe yoga in the next video. Kind of an interesting topic. These are techniques that can be used to mobilize some of the tissues in the foot and ankle and relieve pain in these areas as well. And these movements heavily utilize some of these muscles of the anterior leg compartment in addition to the intrinsic foot muscles. So we'll be covering the intrinsic foot muscles in several videos, but join us in this one and we'll take a look at some good techniques for toe yoga. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.